The Reign of Terror, or the Terror French, La Terreur, is the label given by most historians to a period during the French Revolution after the First French Republic was established. Several historians consider the Reign of Terror to have begun in 1793, placing the starting date at either 5 September, June or March birth of the Revolutionary Tribunal, while some consider it to have begun in September 1792 September massacres, or even July 1789 when the first lynchings took place, but there is a consensus that it ended with the fall of Maximilien Robespierre in July 1794. Between June 1793 and the end of July 1794, there were 16,594 official death sentences in France, of which 2,639 were in Paris. <inaudible> Bariri and Robespierre glorify terror There was a sense of emergency among leading politicians in France in the summer of 1793 between the widespread civil war and counter-revolution. Bertrand Bariri exclaimed on 5 September 1793 in the convention, "'Let's make terror the order of the day.'" They were determined to avoid street violence such as the September massacres of 1792 by taking violence into their own hands as an instrument of government. Robespierre in February 1794 in a speech explained the necessity of terror. If the basis of popular government in peacetime is virtue, the basis of popular government during a revolution is both virtue and terror, virtue, without which terror is baneful, terror, without which virtue is powerless. Terror is nothing more than speedy, severe and inflexible justice, it is thus an emanation of virtue, it is less a principle in itself, than a consequence of the general principle of democracy, applied to the most pressing needs of the patery homeland, fatherland. Some historians argue that such terror was a necessary reaction to the circumstances. Others suggest there were additional causes, including ideological and emotional. <inaudible> Influences on the terror <inaudible> Enlightenment thought Enlightenment thought emphasized the importance of rational thinking and began challenging legal and moral foundations of society, providing the leaders of the terror with new ideas about the role and structure of government. Rousseau's social contract argued that each person was born with rights, and they would come together to form a government that would then protect those rights. Under the social contract, the government was required to act for the general will, which represented the interests of everyone rather than a few factions. Drawing from the idea of a general will, Robespierre felt that the French Revolution could result in a republic built for the general will but only once those who fought this ideal were expelled. Those who resisted the government were deemed tyrants, fighting against the virtue and honor of the general will. The leaders felt their ideal version of government was threatened from the inside and outside of France, and terror was the only way to preserve the dignity of the republic created from French Revolution. Robespierre's ideology was not strictly derived from Rousseau. The writings of another Enlightenment thinker of the time, Baron de Montesquieu, greatly influenced Robespierre. One of Montesquieu's writings, The Spirit of the Laws, defines a core principle of a democratic government, virtue. He describes it as the love of laws and of our country. In Robespierre's speech to the National Convention on February 5, 1794, on political morality, he talks about virtue being the fundamental principle of popular or democratic government. This was, in fact, the same virtue defined by Montesquieu almost fifty years earlier. Robespierre believed that the virtue needed for any democratic government was extremely lacking in the French people. As a result, he decided to weed out those he believed could never possess this virtue. The result was a continual push towards terror. The convention used this as justification for the course of action to crush the enemies of the revolution. Let the laws be executed, and let liberty be saved. These members of the Enlightenment movement greatly influenced revolutionary leaders, however, cautions from other Enlightenment thinkers were blatantly ignored. Voltaire's warnings were often overlooked, though some of his ideas were used for justification of the revolution and the start of the terror. He protested against Catholic dogmas and the ways of Christianity stating, of all religions, the Christian should of course inspire the most toleration, but till now the Christians have been the most intolerant of all men. 
These criticisms were often used by Robespierre and other leaders as justification for their anti-religious reforms. Voltaire also laid down some warnings. In his Philosophical Dictionary, he states, We are all steeped in weakness and error, let us forgive each other our follies, that is the first law of nature and every individual who persecutes a man, his brother, because he is not of his opinion, is a monster. The importance of forgiveness and understanding the failings of the human conditions were obviously lost on Robespierre and other leaders as they pursued terror. Topic: <laughs> Threats of foreign invasion. After the beginning of the French Revolution, the surrounding monarchies did not show great hostility towards the rebellion. Though mostly ignored, Louis XVI was later able to find support in Leopold II of Austria Marie Antoinette's brother and Frederick William II of Prussia. On August 27, 1791, these foreign leaders made the Pilnitz Declaration saying they would restore the French monarch if other European rulers joined. In response to what they viewed to be the meddling of foreign powers, France declared war on April 20, 1792. However, at this point, the war was only Prussia and Austria against France. France began this war with a large series of defeats which set a precedent of fear of invasion in the people that would last throughout the war. Massive reforms of military institutions, while very effective in the long run, presented the initial problems of inexperienced forces and leaders of questionable political loyalty. In the time it took for officers of merit to use their new freedoms to climb the chain of command, France suffered. Many of the early battles were definitive losses for the French. There was the constant threat of the Austro-Prussian forces which were advancing easily toward the capital, threatening to destroy Paris if the monarch was harmed. This series of defeats, coupled with militant uprisings and protests within the borders of France pushed the government to resort to drastic measures to ensure the loyalty of every citizen to not only France but more importantly to the revolution. While this series of losses was eventually broken, the reality of what might have happened if they persisted hung over France. The tide would not turn from them until September of 1792 when the French won a critical victory at Valmy preventing the Austro-Prussian invasion. While the French military had stabilized and was producing victories by the time the reign of terror officially began, the pressure to succeed in this international struggle acted as justification for the government to pursue its tyrannical actions. It was not until after the execution of Louis XVI and the annexation of the Rhineland that the other monarchies began to feel threatened enough to form the first coalition. The coalition, consisting of Russia, Austria, Prussia, Spain, Holland, and Sardinia, began attacking France from all directions besieging and capturing ports and retaking ground lost to France. With so many similarities to the first days of the Revolutionary Wars, the French government with threats on all sides, unification of the country became a top priority. As the war continued and the reign of terror began, leaders saw a correlation between using terror and achieving victory. Well phrased by Albert Soboul, terror, at first an improvised response to defeat, once organized became an instrument of victory. The threat of defeat and foreign invasion may have helped spur the origins of the terror, but the timely success of the terror with French victories added justification to its growth and continuation. <laughs> Popular pressure During the Reign of Terror, the sans culottes and the Ebertists put pressure on the National Convention delegates and contributed to the overall instability of France. The National Convention was bitterly split between the Montagnards and the Girondins. The Girondins were more conservative leaders of the National Convention, while the Montagnards supported radical violence and pressures of the lower classes. Once the Montagnards gained control of the National Convention, they began demanding radical measures. Moreover, the sans culottes, the scrappy, urban workers of France, agitated leaders to inflict punishments on those who opposed the interests of the poor. The sans culottes violent demonstrations pushing their demands, created constant pressure for the Montagnards to enact reform. The sans culottes fed the frenzy of instability and chaos by utilizing popular pressure during the revolution. For example, the sans culottes sent letters and petitions to the Committee of Public Safety urging them to protect their interests and rights with measures such as taxation of foodstuffs that favored workers over the rich. They advocated for arrests of those deemed to oppose reforms against those with privilege, and the more militant members would advocate pillage in order to achieve the desired equality. 
The resulting instability caused problems that made forming the new republic and achieving full political support even more critical. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious upheaval. The reign of terror was characterized by a dramatic rejection of long-held religious authority, its hierarchical structure, and the corrupt and intolerant influence of the aristocracy and clergy. Religious elements that long stood as symbols of stability for the French people, were replaced by reason and scientific thought. The radical revolutionaries and their supporters desired a cultural revolution that would rid the French state of all Christian influence. This process began with the fall of the monarchy, an event that effectively defrocked the state of its sanctification by the clergy via the doctrine of divine right and ushered in an era of reason. Many long held rights and powers were stripped from the church and given to the state. In 1789, church lands were expropriated and priests killed and forced to leave France. A festival of reason was held in the Notre Dame Cathedral, which was renamed the Temple of Reason and the old traditional calendar was replaced with a new revolutionary one. The leaders of the terror tried to address the call for these radical, revolutionary aspirations, while at the same time trying to maintain tight control on the dechristianization movement that was threatening to the clear majority of the still-devoted Catholic population of France. The tension sparked by these conflicting objectives laid a foundation for the justified Use of terror to achieve revolutionary ideals and rid France of the religiosity that revolutionaries believed was standing in the way. <laughs> Major events during the terror On 10 March 1793 the National Convention created the Revolutionary Tribunal. Among those charged by the tribunal, about a half were acquitted though the number dropped to about a quarter after the enactment of the law of 22 Prairial. In March rebellion broke out in the Vendée in response to mass conscription, which developed into a civil war that lasted until after the terror. On 6 April the Committee of Public Safety was created, which gradually became the de facto wartime government. On 2 June, the Parisian sans culottes surrounded the National Convention, calling for administrative and political purges, a low fixed price for bread, and a limitation of the electoral franchise to sans culottes alone. With the backing of the National Guard, they persuaded the Convention to arrest 29 Girondist leaders. In reaction to the imprisonment of the Girondin deputies, some 13 departments started the Federalist revolts against the National Convention in Paris, which were ultimately crushed. On 24 June, the Convention adopted the first Republican Constitution of France, the French Constitution of 1793. It was ratified by public referendum, but never put into force. On 13 July the assassination of Jean-Paul Meret, a Jacobin leader and journalist, resulted in a further increase in Jacobin political influence. Georges Danton, the leader of the August 1792 uprising against the king, was removed from the committee. On July 27, 1793, Robespierre became part of the Committee of Public Safety. On 23 August, the National Convention decreed the levée en masse. The young men shall fight, the married man shall forge arms and transport provisions, the women shall make tents and clothes and shall serve in the hospitals, the children shall turn all lint into linen, the old men shall betake themselves to the public square in order to arouse the courage of the warriors and preach hatred of kings and the unity of the republic." On 9 September, the convention established paramilitary forces, the "...revolutionary armies." to force farmers to surrender grain demanded by the government. On 17 September, the Law of Suspects was passed, which authorized the imprisonment of vaguely defined suspects. This created a mass overflow in the prison systems. On 29 September, the convention extended price fixing from grain and bread to other essential goods, and also fixed wages. On 10 October, the convention decreed that the provisional government shall be revolutionary until peace. On 24 October, the French Republican calendar was enacted. The trial of the Girondins started on the same day and they were executed on 31 October. Anti-clerical sentiments increased during 1793 and a campaign of dechristianization occurred. On 10 November 20 Brumaire year 2 of the French Republican calendar, the Ebertists organized a festival of reason. 
On 14 Frimaire, the 5th of December 1793, was passed the Law of Frimaire, which gave the central government more control over the actions of the representatives on mission. On 16 Pluvios, the 4th of February 1794, the National Convention decreed that slavery be abolished in all of France and French colonies. On 8 and 13 Ventos, the 26th of February and the 3rd of March, Saint Just proposed decrees to confiscate the property of exiles and opponents of the revolution, known as the Ventos decrees. By the end of 1793, two major factions had emerged, both threatening the revolutionary government, the Ebertists, who called for an intensification of the terror and threatened insurrection, and the Dantonists, led by Georges Danton, who demanded moderation and clemency. The Committee of Public Safety took actions against both. The major Ebertists were tried before the Revolutionary Tribunal and executed on 24 March. The Dantonists were arrested on 30 March, tried on 3 to 5 April and executed on 5 April. On 20 Prairial the 8th of June, was celebrated across the country the Festival of the Supreme Being, which was part of the cult of the Supreme Being, a deist national religion. On 22 Prairial, the 10th of June, the National Convention passed a law proposed by Georges Couthon, known as the Law of 22 Prairial, which simplified the judicial process and greatly accelerated the work of the Revolutionary Tribunal. With the enactment of the law, the number of executions greatly increased, and the period from this time to the Thermidorian reaction became known as the Grand Terror. On 8 Mesidor the, 26th of June, the French army won the Battle of Fleurus, which marked a turning point in France's military campaign and undermined the necessity of wartime measures and the legitimacy of the revolutionary government. <laughs> Thermidorian reaction The fall of Robespierre was brought about by a combination of those who wanted more power for the Committee of Public Safety and a more radical policy than he was willing to allow and the moderates who completely opposed the revolutionary government. They had, between them, made the law of 22 Prairial one of the charges against him, so that, after his fall, to advocate terror would be seen as adopting the policy of a convicted enemy of the Republic, putting the advocate's own head at risk. Between his arrest and his execution, Robespierre may have tried to commit suicide by shooting himself, although the bullet wound he sustained, whatever its origin, only shattered his jaw. Alternatively, he may have been shot by the gendarme Merda. The great confusion that arose during the storming of the Municipal Hall of Paris, where Robespierre and his friends had found refuge, makes it impossible to be sure of the wound's origin. In any case, Robespierre was guillotined the next day, the reign of the Standing Committee of Public Safety was ended. New members were appointed the day after Robespierre's execution, and limits on terms of office were fixed a quarter of the committee retired every three months. The committee's powers were gradually eroded. See also Bals des Victimes Tricotas Drownings at Nantes State terrorism Works cited Battle of Valmy, 20 September 1792. Weapons and Warfare. April 9, 2018. Accessed October 30, 2018. HTTPS colon slash slash weaponsandwarfare dot com slash twenty eighteen slash oh four slash ten slash battle dash of dash valmy dash twenty dash September dash one seven nine two slash Bloy, Marjorie. The First Coalition 1793 1797. A Web of English History. Accessed October 21, 2018. http wwwhistoryhomecouk slash c 8 france slash coalit 1htm Leopold, II, and Frederick William. The Declaration of Pilnitz. 1791. French Revolution. February 27, 2018. Accessed October 26, 2018. HTTPS colon slash slash alphahistory dot com slash French Revolution slash de Clayton dash of dash pilnitz dash one seven nine one slash McCletchy, Scott. Maximilian Robespierre, Master of the Terror. Maximilian Robespierre, Master of the Terror. Accessed October 23, 2018. 
http colon slash slash people dot loino dot edu slash tilde history slash journal slash nineteen eighty three dash four slash mcclechy dot htm hash twenty two Montesquieu Modern History Sourcebook, Montesquieu, The Spirit of the Laws, 1748. Internet History Sourcebooks. Accessed October 23, 2018. https slash sourcebooksfordhamedu slash mod slash Montesquieu-spirit.asp. Ozuf, Mona. War and Terror in French Revolutionary Discourse, 1792-1794. The Journal of Modern History 56, No. 4 1984, 580–97. http colon slash slash www.jstore.org.du.idm.oclc.org slash stable slash 1880323. Popkin, Jeremy D. A Short History of the French Revolution. 6th ed. London, Routledge, 2016. Robespierre. On Political Morality. Liberty, Equality, Fraternity, accessed October 19, 2018. http slash revolution slash d slash four one three Rothenberg, Gunther E. The Origins, Causes, and Extension of the Wars of the French Revolution and Napoleon. The Journal of Interdisciplinary History 18, No. 4, 1988, 771-93. Doi 204824 https slash slash www.jstore.org slash stable slash twenty forty eight twenty four. Terror is the order of the day. Liberty, Equality, Fraternity, accessed October 26, 2018, http colon slash slash chnm.gmu.edu slash revolution slash d slash four one six Voltaire. Voltaire, Selections from the Philosophical Dictionary. Omica RSS. Accessed October 23, 2018. http colon slash slash Adieu, Revolution, D. 273.